it was it was funny. I mean, I didn't really think much of it, but Sarah definitely thought I was a uh, yeah in her words a jerk. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello, Charlene. It's a very exciting day. It is. This day has been a long time coming. It has. Yeah. Longer than you. It's lo- longer than the amount of years between now and when you were on The Bachelor. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very, very awkward way of saying that. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly right. All I'm saying is that pretty much since we started this podcast, this Love Fest couple has been requested. Mm -hmm. People have wanted to hear from you guys. Hotly, hotly hotly requested. Mm -hmm. And actually, I have a special place in my heart for Miss Sarah Heron, because she's from my generation of The Bachelor. (laughs) Yes. And she was one of the first people from the franchise that I met and really got to love. And so I've always felt that we, if we lived in the same place, we would be closer friends. Mm-hmm. And so I'm so excited that she has joined us today with her fiance, Dylan. Very exciting. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank girls. you. Thank you. We're excited to be here. Mm-hmm. I know of- it's crazy. I was thinking I'm like the only person that's like from a season longer ago than you is me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah, it took, it took yeah. a while. We knew what you meant, I think. <laughs> but yeah, isn't it funny how where time takes you? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I was thinking about your Instagram post, Sarah, where you said that. The manifesting. You had a great post about manifesting and things aren't necessarily going to happen in the way you had planned. Yes. We make plans and God laughs. Right? Yes. 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 I love that thing. Yeah. So today, these love fests are really just meant to feel like double dates. We will ask you lots of questions about your relationship and the dynamic between the two of you, but it's really meant to feel like a conversation. So yes, we're just going to have fun today. So I Let's do it. <laughs> Let's <Right>. do it. <laughs> so even though I know you have shared this before, I would like you to nonetheless Tell us how you two met, and I want his and hers perspectives on this. Okay. No, you're, you're, you no she first. says you want, she wants you first. Oh, you want me first. <laughs> okay. Sarah founded SheLift, um, a nonprofit, and I was living in Colorado, central Colorado, outside of Aspen, and she was looking for a videographer to document her first retreat that she was hosting in Aspen. And uh, through the network, uh, my name popped up. We had a quick interview and met in person um, at the base of Aspen Highlands. To go skiing. To go skiing, Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was more of just like a meet and greet. Uh, Hey, I'm Dylan. You're Sarah. Is this going to work out? (laughs) And she's like, well, you want to go skiing? Do you want to go to the top of the mountain? I was like, all right, sure. Like, let's go. So we went up. And Aspen Highlands is one of the steepest inbound mountains in the U.S., Wow. And uh, th- th- at the very top, you can hike, I think it's like 800 vertical feet, something like 12,000 steps or something up the ridge. And you top out at about 12,000 vertical feet. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sarah said, I would like to hike the bowl with you. And to mm-hmm. me, when you say I want to hike the bowl, it means like you're a very competent skier. <laughs> 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 and I didn't think much of it because I also had another appointment. So I was like, OK, whatever, we'll just run up there. And we're about halfway up. And thankfully, she had a friend there because Sarah was actually pretty scared and <laughs> shaking um, and breathing hard because she was living at sea In level. California. <laughs> oh, wow. And I was starting to get impatient because I had uh, another appointment. And But I, obviously, I'm not going to abandon her on top of the mountain. <laughs> so I had to like, <laughs> um, kind of just bite my tongue and just kind of encourage her and finally get to the top. And, um, well, I don't know, this is kind of where our stories start kind of, uh, conflicting, but (laughs) (laughs) Uh I thought it was very patient and understanding and we ski down. And once we get to the place where I think she can get down the rest of her way, I kind of had to go. I mean, I was like already two hours late. And so I kind of just ditched her, um, (laughs) with her friend, with her friend, her friend was there. An honorable ditching. (laughs) An honorable ditch. And, uh, and that was our first real in-person interaction. And uh, it was it was funny. I mean, I didn't really think much of it, but Sarah definitely thought I was, uh, yeah, in her words. A jerk. Wow. <laughs> well, you have a very high bar for jerkdom. I mean, I mean well, because, cause I, so 
the reason I wanted to have this meet and greet and go skiing together was because in two weeks when we were hosting the actual she lift event, I wanted to make sure that, you know, it was a five day retreat with girls with various different disabilities. And so I wanted to make sure that he like had patience and compassion for Mm. girls that were learning to ski. And so basically like, I was like, he's an asshole. (laughs) I don't want to work with All of that was like very much unbeknownst to me. So like I show up thinking we're just going to like shake hands and maybe do a quick run, but really she's like Betty. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're doing a mountain rescue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And it was, it was like purely professional at that point. So, you know, it was, I was vetting him and I, I will admit, like, I think I'm a good skier and I am a, I'm a great skier, but admittedly, I think like my ego is a little ahead of myself that day being like, yeah, let's go up to the bowl and like shred the bowl. And then I got up there and totally freaked out. And to put things in context, how many times have you actually skied the bowl? Maybe like twice before that. So, (laughs) so, but then after that, we came back to Aspen a few weeks later for the she lift retreat. And I was a little nervous because he was going to be like spending such intimate time with all these girls documenting them. And instead he was like insanely just patient and kind and the girls loved him. You know, they were like 22 years old and they all developed crushes on him. And then <laughs> so did I. <laughs> wow. That is okay. Okay. So then like, it's, yeah, I guess the, the best part is it was the very last night of the retreat. All the girls are hanging out and they're on Bumble uh, cause they've all come out of state and they're looking at hot guys in Aspen and then Dylan popped up on Bumble. And so all the girls were like, Oh my God, Oh my God, Dylan's on Bumble. Should we swipe? Right. And I got this like tinge of jealousy, like, Oh my God, what if he swipes right on one of them? And then he starts dating one of them and I missed my opportunity. <laughs> so I texted him and I was like, you better not swipe right on any of my she lift girls. Oh, nice. <laughs> and he was like, Subtle. the real question is, how come I haven't swiped right on you? Oh, and, oh this yeah. is a movie moment. Did you yeah, really so say like, that? Oh, it's on. It's on. Wow. Oh, my God. OK, this is a lot more direct than I was expecting, actually, because I yeah, knew that he was hired. Wow. Oh, and it all happened very fast because the next day I was leaving, um, essentially back to LA. And so he's like, can I take you to dinner tomorrow? And I said, no, I'm leaving. Uh, but I could do like coffee or lunch. And I have my 19 year old sister with me when he's like, okay. So we went to a coffee shop and we walked in and I immediately told my sister, I was like, okay, you sit over there. <laughs> like you're not <laughs> sitting with us. And then, and she was a good sport about it. But after he walked me to the car, and what happened? She got on her TP clothes and gave me a kiss. And I was like totally taken aback. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've been <laughs> moving kind of fast, aren't you? <laughs> hey, did you say that? what I said in response. Because he actually said that. Yeah, and she goes, yeah, the girls from The Bachelor move fast. I, no, I said, I'm, I'm, no, that's not what I said. I said, I'm from The Bachelor. <laughs> we move fast. <laughs> Things have to move fast or something like that. That's not untrue. Yeah. I know. I yeah. think you just get like, so in touch with your emotions and what you're feeling. You're like, well, I need to know. Yeah. I, I, I mean, know she's got to be engaged in six weeks. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if she's not yeah, kissing yeah, you within right. a week, something's wrong. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I love this story. That's a great story. You met cute, kind of. Did they meet cute? I mean, there was Oh, the, it's definitely made cute. But what I find interesting is that this was meant to be a sort of meet and greet. And you guys are spending like half the day skiing together. Yeah. Is that yeah. normal in Colorado? <laughs> Uh, mm, no, no. I mean, in Colorado, sometimes you'll like meet somebody at, well, here in Aspen at the sun deck and just like, like have a beer and then maybe take one run and that's it, you know? I don't know. But, I feel like it was my move. When I first moved back from LA, I was so stoked to be here. I did a lot of like first date ski dates. Wow. I love this. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, first date like activities for but, sure. Yeah. Like in like central Colorado, I mean, it's like, we don't have a lot of epic restaurants and epic events to go to. So it's like you go for a hike or you go rafting you or have other you go epic skiing things. or you go mountain yeah. biking. It's like, that's how you connect with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. It's and very you, recreation heavy. 
place. Oh, it sounds dreamy. Yeah. Also, you must be silently sussing out each other's skills, right? Well, I was definitely impressed with his because he's been skiing since he was like three years old. And so for me, I was like, oh my God, like this guy is so good. He's such a good skier. I was totally impressed. And then you were probably like, Oh God! She's really pretty. Yeah, thanks. Fun uh, fun fact: My parents, in my dating days, one of the first questions they asked me about any guy I start dating was, "But does he ski?" Mm -hmm. It's very important. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm Canadian, right? And they're like, "Well." Can you spend holidays with us? Can he hang? Uh, yeah, it's very important. I mean, it's really important. Andy, can you ski? I can ski. Yeah. I can okay, ski. Guys. He passed. And I and I have to say, with past, Charlene is an excellent snowboarder. Yeah, I snowboard. Excellent. Yeah. Um, oh, sweet. And, and I was one of those. I'm of the generation where at around 13, it was suddenly uncool to ski and everyone yeah. started snowboarding, yeah. except I yeah. never switched back. But yeah, I feel right like at, at some point, my joints are going to have to force me back onto skis. Yeah. But I have not. Skied Everyone since comes back around. Don't yeah. Be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, so, Sarah, I feel like we got your first impression of Dylan. Dylan, like uh, as a person, what, what was your first initial impression? Well, maybe I'll like step back because when she first contacted me about uh, doing the She Lift video, what am I going to do? I'm going to Google her and go to her website. And so I like see this like beautiful TV face kind of personality. And I'm like, you know, here I am kind of like a ski bum. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, maybe if I do this thing, like obviously my background has been journalism. I always love like human interest pieces. So something like this was always like, up my in my wheelhouse I, I love kind of doing these things like telling the um underrepresented stories out there I guess I should say mm. and yeah. so when I saw her and her kind of like background a little bit not only was she very interesting but I, I must say I was like oh maybe she can help me grow my audience you know so to speak and it's like oh a horrible God. thing to That's say so it's a horrible <laughs> thing to say but like when you're like you know the, the very beginning of Don't your career that was not a thing. It was just like your career. No, yeah, it's oh, a step. Everything career. is a stepping stone in some way. Well, I, I mean, can totally it was still like you, we're working in. You know, it's like you get work through Instagram as a videographer and a photographer. I'm not mm -hmm. looking to be like a social influencer, mm -hmm. but still like the reach. You know, it's like okay, if I do something amazing for her, I think there'll be kind of trickled out. Absolutely. You know? Then once you met me, yeah. yeah. So that was like that's the career side of it. But then yeah. when I met her and I saw that we had a lot in common. And just the way that we interacted with the creativity, it was almost like a perfect match because, you know, I would throw an idea out and she would like just uh, push it a little bit further and then I'd push a little bit further and we would just kind of like bounce these ideas back and forth. And so really, it's a really interesting connection that we have because it's not like uh, the typical past relationships of mine, which has just been like, you meet somebody at, say, at the bar or at a party and you have this like lust connection. We have this like very intimate professional respect for each other that then mm. grew into um, oh. like a, a relationship, a, oh, a I love romantic that. relationship. Mm -hmm. Love that. That's a great answer. You were mm -hmm. about to say something. No, it's about to say that that kind of honesty is only spoken by someone in a strong relationship. Right? Yeah. Because, that is so yeah, true. If there are cracks. You're not like, yeah, I started dating her because my audience would grow. You would never <laughs> say that. You'd never yeah. be able to say that. It's so true. Yeah. And you've admitted before, too, that there was a sort of like sparkle factor to my having been on the show. Yeah, it was like you had like a superhero. And that's unrelated to being good for his career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've now my, I've really leveraged my 6,000 Instagram followers. That's all I do now. Just, just, just raking in the dough. But, uh, but it is kind of like a little bit of a superpower. Like, a, like you're a superhero. You got your, you know, your Clark Kent. Well, definitely Charlene. Yes. It's interesting. You know, not everyone was on the bachelor, I guess. So yeah. Andy, fact. did you know what the, like, did you know about bachelor world or anything? Like did you watch? I knew of the bachelor because, you know, like I'm a human in America, but I did, <laughs> I, I, I only watched the first episode of season one. And I was oh, like, wow. I was like, this is okay, but I'm, it's not what I expected. And I want to get into what I thought the bachelor was going to be, but I, <laughs> I just sort of quit on it. Then I met Charlie and 
And after I discovered that she was on the show, I went back and actually watched all her scenes. Like I with fast me. forwarded to the scenes with her, yeah, and we which watched was the basically whole like fifty percent making out. Yeah, with one. He part. got yeah. a real kick oh out of gosh. it. <laughs> Wait, Dylan, have you watched? Have you watched any of Sarah's? No, I refuse. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wait, Standing because, firm. for for like you just makes you uncomfortable. You know, I I respect where like she comes from and her history, and she's told me all about it. She. She's like shown me some highlight clips of these moments from Paradise and moments from the actual um, Bachelor in Paradise and <laughs> or the other one, um, the main the one. Other one. That's, and that's the one. I like I like it, but then I see like the you know she sits down on the couch every Monday and I see the real <laughs> current episodes and I just like I don't really need to see Sarah going through that. Like mm, it oh. doesn't do it for me. I was you know I respect and I know that it was very transformative for her, but like. No, like the person I know isn't that. And it doesn't really, I just, yeah. I Fair. I mean, it really is yeah. just a small facet of who we are. It's, it hardly mm-hmm. encompasses our whole right. being. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you're not the first person to say that too. I think yeah. a lot of partners don't really want to watch. I mean, we went back to 72 and Sunny and we've been back there multiple times. And like, I re- like that's kind of where I, I guess get off is kind of like the creative just, side of it. That's the old advertising agency I worked mm-hmm. at yes. while all the bachelor was yeah. happening. So it's like, she spent 10 years there and like, I know that's really why we connected. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really because she was like a, totally. a yeah. celebrity of some sort because she was on the show. It was because like we have this creative bond. Yeah. So do, you, do you, Sarah want Dylan to watch the show? <laughs> Not really. I mean, she was an icon. I just have she to was say. good. She, yeah. she, 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 she yeah. acquitted herself well. I it's thank you. Um, you know, like last time I remember when they were doing those greatest seasons, mm-hmm. um, those recaps, and they recapped Sean's season, and I was like super nervous because that was nine years ago for me. Almost yeah, I think it was nine years ago. And so <clears throat> watching back on some of those moments, like it's such a, it's a younger version of me and I'm not going to deny her, but it's like, <clears throat> it's kind of cringeworthy. Like you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not like that. I wouldn't talk about myself that way anymore. And so I, I don't really think it's, um, it's not something I need to like pull out of the archives for Dylan to see, because I think I've evolved and grown so much, even though it is, it is a part of who I was, but Paradise was really cool. If you wanted to watch Paradise, I would support that. <laughs> Paradise is fun. But we, there could do a, more, we could do a recap, a live recap. There's more making out in Paradise, though, so he probably doesn't want to see that. <laughs> I know what you mean about that. It, it does feel like you recognize that girl, but you're not that girl anymore. Not yeah. even close. Yeah. 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 We interrupt this program to bring you a message we have brought before, but we will continue to bring... Hello Tushy was our very first sponsor ever, and yes. we have a very, very dear place in our hearts for Hello Tushy, mm. and the impact they've had on our, on all butts. All butts. All the butts. There are no ifs or ands about it. Mm, nicely done. And in case you are new around here, the Hello Tushy bidet is affixed to your existing toilet, so you can turn your regular old toilet into one that sprays you, like those fancy Japanese ones, and you don't need any special plumbing And with a bidet on your toilet, you will use up to 80% less toilet paper, which I'm sorry, is better for the environment. But also better for your your purse. (laughs) I was thinking of all the different words I have for the thing you put money in. I came (laughs) up with purse. Whatever. You get the point. Wallet, purse, pocketbook. Yes. And we have long felt that bidets get a bad rap for no good reason. No idea why. Yeah. It's incredibly archaic to wipe the most disgusting part of your body with dry... Toilet paper. And for those of you who think that that's where it all ends, <laughs> you are dead wrong. The aquatic stimulation you receive from the Hello Tushy can help you in ways that you may need help in. <laughs> in ways you never imagined possible. Yes. So perhaps instead of reading War and Peace on the toilet, you may just read a comic strip. <laughs> you get my drift. Give the gift of a clean bum to yourself and your loved ones this holiday season and get 10% off plus free shipping right now when you go to hellotushy.com slash shandy. Tag us and at hellotushy on social media 
so we can celebrate your clean bum. That's hellotushy.com slash Shandy for 10% off plus free shipping. Okay, so I feel like you touched on this a bit, just talking professionally, but and you can include professionally, but also I'm interested in personality-wise, how you two complement each other. Well, we're both very driven. Okay. Um, you know, we're kind of both perfectionists, and so we we have very high expectations of each other constantly, which is both good and bad. I mean, sometimes you just want to like put your hands up and be like, that's good enough. And the other <laughs> one's like, nope, you keep going. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, we definitely bring out the best of each other for sure. Yeah. Um, I- we're also both only children. Uh, so it's like, we kind of, we're both a little bit introverted. So we like understand each other. Um, and like our energy levels play off of each other one, uh, really well. Um, but yeah, I think it's like the, we just complement each other's like creative drive and a lot of the same values. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that answer about the, their, the energy levels. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, I, that's actually a thing. And I feel like you don't realize how good that can be until you don't have it in a relationship. And you're like, wait, mm-hmm. no, I just wanted stay in tonight. And then the other person's like, what do you mean? Like, let's go out. Yeah. You know, it, it can sort of take a toll after a while. Yeah. If you're, mm-hmm. if you're not on the yeah. same page. Okay. But we're also not afraid to kind of like let each other do their own thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, we kind of have to, because we're both freelancers. And so it's like, I'm not completely her Instagram husband. I also have my own side careers and I have to like leave for like a week or two at a time and, you know, I'll come back and I'll be exhausted, but I still want to go see some friends. And she's okay with me, like going out and just like catching up with friends and not just being yeah. totally like homebody after being gone for a little while. Yeah. And like, for example, you know, we love traveling together. I, I learned to travel with Dylan, but I had never really, cause I had never really left the country except for the bachelor um, until I met Dylan and we started traveling a ton. And because of that, it's like, I now have traveled by myself. I went and hiked Mount Kilimanjaro by myself and being able to do things separate that Dylan would have loved to do Kilimanjaro with me and I would have loved to have him there, but it was also important to me and our relationship that like, I still go do new things by myself every Mm -hmm. once in a while. And same with him. Like he goes on expeditions every year and disconnects from the world. And I have to kind of like let him go do that. Mm -hmm. And it's just important to like maintain respect for each other and our, and our interests. Yeah. Oh, I love that answer. Yeah, I love that answer. Very healthy symbiosis. It's really important actually. So half of this podcast is us giving relationship advice from the, from the perspective of a happily married couple. And we actually just got a question like this, where this couple that had been together for six years from 18 to 24, they didn't really have any outside friends. And they were like, is that, okay like we're just each other's worlds and we were like well <laughs> you can't like it's about living life you yeah. know it's not all about just serving your relationship and your relationship will thrive because of the full life you live outside of it yeah, yeah. exactly we don't have any other friends but <laughs> <laughs> no, no we, we kind of do <laughs> so because you touched on this you do work together you both have your separate professional pursuits but you do work together quite mm-hmm. a bit yes Mm-hmm. Is that uh, how does that? I'm just curious because since we've started this podcast, it's been I think a source of bonding and also a source of stress that yeah. wasn't there before. So I'm curious to know how you guys navigate that and and where you think you come out on that. Is yeah. it on top or is it a very story? delicately? Yeah. <laughs> At times, I mean, it has been the greatest gift. Being partners creatively has allowed us to like travel and develop this lifestyle that we want and love. And so it's brought a lot of, it's added so much value to our lives. And it also is really hard. Like there's no sugar coating it. It's been really hard at times. We've probably had our biggest fights because we were trying to make some work happen that we couldn't find a happy middle ground creative, creatively. Yeah. And, but it's also been, like she said, the greatest gifts. I mean, we've traveled the world together because we're able to work together and produce great content together. Yeah. And it's tough because when you're in a relationship, like you guys are probably experiencing, maybe it's it's, sometimes like boundaries get crossed of like Mm -hmm. you talk to your partner in a way that like maybe you wouldn't talk to a a colleague or vice versa. And so then it can get really hairy. And Mm -hmm. then when you live together, 
I don't, it's just like <laughs> live, work, eat, sleep, breathe everything together. And it's humans weren't meant to do that. And yeah. so it does take a lot of practice and intention to just not. Well, Straight modern day up. humans were not meant to do that. Yeah. We yeah, always right. Yeah. Yeah. Together. yeah. I but don't think they were they trained. How, like, <laughs> but they talk about even like way back then it was like there was someone in the village that served a different purpose for everything. Mm. Like you didn't rely on one person to meet all your needs. Yeah, yeah that's fair. You relied on the mm. whole community. That's oh, fair. I relate to your answer so hard. It's yeah. it, especially when part of your brand or your content, not all of it, but part of it is your relationship. Sometimes you just want to turn that side off, you know, what, what yeah. you're sharing and also just the fact that you have to do this all the time. You know, it, it does, I think, I love how you're like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's hard. No. Because, and I think it yeah. also is a baptism by fire for a relationship. If you can make it through a, a healthy working relationship with your partner, your relationship is solid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for our one year anniversary of this podcast, we answered a bunch of questions. And one of them was, has, you know, has having this podcast together made your relationship stronger? And I think the answer everyone wants is yes, it has, you know, like we're so much closer than we were a no, year ago. Slight, but... We're like 2% closer to divorce. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, it was pretty much like, we don't feel any closer than we did a year ago. And I think that's as good as it's going to get. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's an achievement. Yeah. That's something to celebrate. Yeah. Definitely yeah, you, a double-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. Can you yeah. take a, a step back and like really make sure that it's like, you're very, being very pragmatic, not taking it like personally, you know, what is the objective of this work relationship? Mm. And then why are you guys together in your romantic relationship? Yeah. It's like, you have to really keep those separate and it's really difficult. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, it's almost like the analogy to working at home with a COVID, like everyone's working at home and their boss is calling them at like 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. You're like, yeah. wait a minute, just because I'm <laughs> yeah. home doesn't mean I'm at the office. Like I'm, yeah. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. So I don't know if this is a good segue, but maybe it'll come out of that. Uh, what was an early hurdle in your relationship? Aside from you thinking he was a jerk right out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it was probably two years ago. Do you know what I'm going to say? Mm -hmm, but. <laughs> um, two years ago, I was really struggling. I would say like that was kind of like, I don't even know how to say it, but I just wasn't being very kind to Dylan. I wasn't being kind to myself. I was kind of just a bear. I don't know how to explain it, but we did. There wasn't a lot. Of, I think kind of what we're talking about was like accumulating and I wasn't being very respectful uh, to Dylan. And there was just like a lot of misplaced anger and mm -hmm. unresolved conflict. And so we actually kind of broke up for like a couple days, right? A couple days, um, 48 hours, <laughs> like, like 36. No, Ooh. it, it says like a, a lot that it's uh, bef sorry. I want you to continue, but it says a lot that you can even talk about it like this. Right. Like I was you know, like the taking of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Oh, I take a lot of, I take all the responsibility and I, I know it takes two to tango, but like I take a lot of 99% of the responsibility because I just wasn't the best version of myself. And so we broke up. Then we like decided to stay together. He tried to break up with me. I wouldn't let him. <laughs> um, we decided to stay together, but that like we had to work on things. I, I needed to start going to therapy to figure out why I was like, like holding grudges and just not, I don't know how to, maybe you would describe it better, but well, how I mean, would you describe it? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I think she was just wound up really, really tight and couldn't really recognize it. Mm. So she was zero to 60 and like no, like no time flat. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I think it's not my place to like explain like, what you had figured out why that was, but like, um, well, yeah, it took a long time. So I started going to therapy mm -hmm. and we started working on the relationship and it was really hard to bounce back from a lot of that. But then I guess it was like t about 10 months later or so the following year, um, when I finally like got into deep into my therapy and seeing a psychiatrist was when I got diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of 
I wouldn't say like gave a lot of answers, but like it, it shed a lot of light on what was going on. I'm sure. Yeah. For me. And so I started medication for that and I don't know how did that. So I would say like that was our first big hurdle was Mm -hmm. working through that. Well, it kind of like all culminated. Right. So it was like consistently the same argument over and over. Mm. Like you're not giving me respect. I get pissed and then I shut down. And then she would be like, you're shutting down. You're not like communicating with me. And it, so it was a constant, just like, you do cycle. this thing, I do this thing. You do yeah. this thing, this I do this cycle. thing. And then we would like resolve it and then be fine for three to four weeks. And then it would blow up again. Mm-hmm. And then so finally, after like doing that for about a year, year and a half, it was like my, my threshold for like happy, unhappy relationship. I was like, we're like surpassing or like we're starting to go below the 80% happiness in my relationship. Mm. And when we get to like 70, 30, to me, it's like not worth it anymore. Like I want to mm-hmm. be in an A, A plus relationship where I'm like, the majority of the time I'm happy. Yeah. You know, no relationship is perfect. You're always going to have work yeah. and I'm not oblivious to that, but it, it still needs to be the majority of the time that you're, you're fucking happy. Yeah. Uh, so sure. Yeah. And so we kind of got to that place and she promised me she was really, really going to work on it. And I promised her I was really, really going to work on my side of it to be more communicative. And yeah, long story short, it's been, I think, more than two years. I think it's almost three years now. Three years Um, in mm -hmm. December. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, wow. So you actually have the the anniversary date of that. That's good. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. That's, that's the meatiest, yeah. like just best, like answer to that question. That was I possibly the best love fest answer to that yeah. question we've ever had. And gotten. I love Sarah, cause you have been very generous about sharing that side of, of your life on Instagram. And I just, I commend you because it yeah. really, I think it helps a yes. lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I think it's important because like growing up, I always, like, I knew something in me was just like went zero to 60. I knew I felt emotions more intensely than like my friends or family would describe feeling emotions. And so like, I always knew something, I was just like, something in me feels deeply intensely. And so I think it's important to be like transparent about it and share it because I just thought like, really something was wrong with me that no one else experiences. Mm -hmm. And I'm just meant to suffer alone through this. And I'm meant to feel things intensely. And that's Mm -hmm. just part of who I am. And it sucks Uh, because I never didn't have have social media when I was growing up. So I didn't know people that felt this way. And so I just feel very compelled to share transparently, whether it's mental health or fertility struggles, Mm -hmm. like, People need to find community through it and just know that they're not alone. So Mm -hmm. I have no qualms about sharing. Yeah. I wish I had that. You really do practice what you preach in that department. And I, I admire Mm -hmm. it very much. And, and it it is a lot more common than I think people believe. And so it really starts with someone like you. And this is also a success story. Yes. It's you're a good, you set a good example. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And 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 almost three years in the rear view. Right. Yeah. With the anniversary (laughs) being noted. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And And it's also important that it does, you know, like a lot of things, it has such a bad stigma. There's such a negative connotation when you say like bipolar disorder and it really doesn't need to be for the same reasons Dylan loves my creativity. Well, guess what? That's part of bipolar mm-hmm. disorder. Mm-hmm. Like sure. that insane passion and and drive to finish projects. Like that's also part of the disorder. Right. And so there is beauty within it. Um, I don't think it should be s- such a negative thing, but um, management is key. key. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love that answer. Yes. Me Wonderful. Too. I answer. also like what Dylan said about, you know, I, you broke it down the way I do. It's like very, yeah, st- very mathematically, yeah. <laughs> but, but I like that answer because it's, it seems so simple and obvious, but so many people who are in relationships who are just settling for these relationships that are like maybe like 30% happy, yeah. happy or 20% happy. Like they're just struggling constantly. They're like, this is what it's like. And this mm-hmm. is what I have. And this is fine. And yeah. it's not fine. Yeah. You, you're supposed to be happy in a relationship. That's the whole period. point. Yeah. Otherwise, why are you doing it? It yeah. makes no sense. Yeah. yeah. 
So I love that answer. Glad you it's said that. Very mathematical and analytical. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm at like 95.5. Five. If it goes below 5%, it's, that's it. Uh, no, I love that Where's answer. The keys? Great answer. Okay, so you kind of touched on this. We're really giving you a lot of heavy hitting questions today. Yeah. It's good. We never get to do this together. It's great. Yeah. I always get to talk. And- we lied. This is an interview. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> So you kind of touched on this, but we ask every Love Fest couple this question. It's Andy's yeah. favorite question. Well, I was go. just about, I was letting you finish your, your beautiful answer, but I, I did notice that you slightly touched on conflict resolution. And I wanted to know how prior to you going into treatment and post, how you guys have learned better to resolve conflict. Well, I think we can probably both answer independently because I think there's like different tools we both use, but Um, for me, conflict for me is usually like when he's pulling away or when, um, I feel like we're not on the same page. And so then I know what's happening in me is it's like, it's activating fear. It's activating like, well, this person doesn't understand me. He's going to leave me. I just, I go, I, I ruminate to the worst places. So for me, it takes effort to kind of like downregulate the nervous system first before trying to figure out resolution. Like you have to downregulate yourself first. Um, and then communication, like I'm someone that's like, we have to talk about it. I have to talk about this now. I can't even go half a day without Mm -hmm. Dylan will be like, I'm going for a walk. Yeah. Hurry back. We have to talk about this. (laughs) (laughs) So that's, I think that's how 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 you manage. Well, I think, our biggest thing was, uh, I think men are more, more sensitive than we let on. Mm -hmm. And so I think when you start being critical of us as individuals, we want to shut down and say, you know, fuck you. No, I'm right. Mm -hmm. Um, like I don't do anything wrong. And so I think what I had had to work on for the last three years, really from that moment of like almost breaking up was not to take things as personally as I used to. And so mm. it's like, that's a constant thing for me. It's just like, quit taking it personally. Yeah. This is a very evolved man. This oh my, I mean, this entire it's couple, unusual. like everything, the fact that they have tools, most people yeah. are like, yeah, I just storm off. Yeah, right. Oh, no, well, I mean, I go to a lot of therapy, so I got, I have the lexicon of therapy <laughs> terms, but like, but also what's really important is, um, uh, oh gosh, now I just, oh, we have to kind of set parameters and it's worth noting that just because we have this doesn't mean it goes perfectly every time. Like obviously emotions get heightened, but, Mm -hmm. uh, we've set parameters that we try to stick to that. There's no like, and sometimes it doesn't always happen, but like no threats, no name calling, Mm -hmm. no, um, especially cause like the threats I'm really, triggered or activated by just because of the like almost breaking up a couple years ago. So it's like, we can't talk about like, well, do you even want to be with me? I don't even know if I want to be with you. Like that's off limits. We can't mm-hmm. talk. Oh, about yes. Like very that. good. I love that answer. Yep. I love that. So, <laughs> gosh, how else do we work through conflict? I go for a bike ride. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. It's good. It's a good place to get to fight. My, my, my distressor for sure. I love Sarah that touching on the the threats because I do think we've talked about this a lot mm-hmm. and through these love fests it's it's very cathartic to talk about relationships and with other like happy couples because the whole point of these is to show that it isn't all just you know rainbows and unicorns like you see right. on the bachelor or whatever but actually it is sort of an ongoing maintenance yeah. And I think a, a key thing to a happy relationship is committing to the fact that it's not always on the verge of ending because something didn't go the way you wanted it to. It's like you're mm-hmm. in it for the long haul. Right. And even in that heightened state, you're not going to wield that as some weapon to try and win the fight in that well, moment. Well, it's a very childish, right. immature reaction that, that, that many adults yes, exhibit. Yes. I would say most adults you always go to the the level 10 mm-hmm. before even looking at level one or two. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you guys have really recognized yeah. that. Really great yeah. answers, yeah. you guys. Man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't we'll know. probably go get in a big fight after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see how that goes down. Well, I think it's very, I mean, you know, when I go have, say, guys night or whatever, and, you know, I have a couple friends who are like in new relationships, 
you know, I think it's a, it's a more common conversation that than I realized to have with friends of just like them going through a struggle with a new girlfriend. And my answer to them always is, uh, well, you just have to ask yourself, is it worth it to you to put in the work with this one? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, cause there's always going to be work. Period. Yep. Yep. So what do you like? I don't know how you're going to justify being with them, but do they make you happy? Do they push you? Do you, you know, do they do X, Y, and Z for you? And if so, then yeah, that's probably worth the work. But if you're just constantly getting in fights and you just don't really like a lot about her, then <laughs> you probably, it's not worth the work, right. you yeah, know, right. but you know, for the big catches, Sarah, uh, you know, it is worth the work. Yeah. <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And yep. it's worth avoiding the big immature fights, which is mm -hmm. one of the things you learn as an adult mm -hmm. is it's not worth damaging and not worth causing, inflicting harm on purpose to make a point. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Is, it isn't it funny as you get older, how you realize that adults don't like, they're just figuring it out too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I marvel at this all the time. Like as you get older, like as a kid, you just sort of imagine someone of a certain age has it all figured out. And when you when you get there, you're like, wait a minute. Totally. Yeah. We're just toddlers. <laughs> we really yeah. are just functioning, getting by. Okay. Yeah. So speaking of toddlers, that's my that's my attempt <laughs> nice, at a segue. Nice. Well done. <laughs> Smooth. So you've been very generous in sharing your IVF journey on the gram. And I just also have to just do a quick shout out because Sarah's Instagram is just the most inspiring thing. Oh, It'll yeah, make you oh. love yourself more and it make you want to get outdoors more. It's just it covers all the bases. But you've Thank been you. very vocal about your journey with IVF and you're partway through it right now. Yes. Like it's we're so we're um, actually only a few days out. I'm not sure when this episode's going to air, so it'll probably be after, but we're a few days out from our embryo transfer. It's been a long journey to get to this point. Um, but yeah, we're, we'll be transferring embryo next Monday and then wow. crossing our fingers for two weeks. Very exciting. So and hoping it sticks. Okay, so my question is, how has that, I mean, this is a whole other thing you've had to navigate as a couple. Yeah. What has that been like? It, I, maybe it is a naive question to ask after asking the working together question, but has it brought you closer or has it been just a, a whole other? I don't know. If it, you, I mean, <laughs> I think Sarah thinks it has, but I don't know. I mean, it's like, it's very difficult for the man because she's doing it all, you know? Yeah. All I had to do is provide a sample and yeah. she's literally like taking the shots and taking the pills and following her schedule and doing all the things, you know, and it's like, I'm here as more support at this point. Mm -hmm. So it has brought us together because, you know, instead of it just being a, a fun surprise, oh, we're pregnant. It's like, you have to put in serious legwork and just like go to the doctor, go to the doctor, go get blood work. You know, I don't know where your specialist is. Fly to your specialist, fly home. Um, update your schedule, do all these things. And like, it's pretty much, you know, we're doing it together, but really it is Sarah mm. and I'm just here to support her. But I think once it does stick, you know, obviously then it all becomes worth it and it does bring us closer together. But I don't yeah. know. It's, it's just like, it's for me, it's just very abstract. So. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like you would, it would almost be frustrating. Like you wish you could take on some of the burden. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wish I just felt Not like so more involved, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. I can read everything on the Internet about what IVF is and what these drugs do, but that doesn't bring in the personal connection anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it just makes me feel like I'm reading a scientific journal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really yeah. is the most hilarious imbalance of work. It's out of control. It's hilarious. It's comical. We had Whitney Bischoff Angel on in our latest hot topic to talk about fertility. Oh, nice. And, and which, by the way, was a really hotly requested topic. So I think just, you know, everyone yeah. wants People it to be discussed more. Hence why yeah. I love how you share your journey. But we were laughing about just we spent like half an hour straight talking about the process of egg freezing and the decision making and the physical yeah. sacrifices you make and the financial sacrifice you make. And like and then meanwhile, yeah. the guy, it's just like, yeah, it's like yep. penthouse magazine. done. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I actually went and saw Whitney uh, about three years ago to freeze my eggs. Oh, nice. And oh. I had gone down the whole process, you know, I, um, I didn't have to take medication or anything, but I did like all the doctor's visits. I flew to Chicago. I met with her 
And ultimately my reports were all great. And so Whitney was like, your egg count looks promising. Um, you know, I think you'd be a great candidate to freeze your eggs. Um, and ultimately I was like, well, you know, what was I? I was probably 20, 29 or 30. And I was like, well, if, well, I guess it was 31. Yeah. If my egg count looks good and you know, it's like $10,000 to freeze your eggs. Like, mm, I'm not going to do it. And then two years later, when we decided to start have trying for a baby and were unsuccessful after seven months, I repeated all the hormone tests and they had like plummeted. And so wow. everything like hindsight's 2020, right? I'm like, Oh, $10,000 two years ago versus probably upward of, you know, tens of thousands of dollars now to do mm. IVF. It's like uh, what you wish you knew. Yeah. But, oh, I love um, the honesty in that. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, there's still, it's not to say like freezing your eggs is the solve. I definitely think it's great insurance for women and couples these days. Like everyone's wanting to have kids later in life. I think it's a great, great option. Um, but we are in excellent hands. And I'm so happy that we're with Dr. Amy Avazade, AKA Egg Whisper yeah. on Instagram. <laughs> best and handle she's ever. <laughs> yeah. Best, best handle. She's amazing. And, uh, yeah, so we're in good hands, but to answer the question about bringing us closer, I think also, I feel like it's brought us closer because it's forced us to have really hard conversations mm -hmm. that a couple um, who isn't faced with infertility might not be having quite yet. And so, as you guys know, we're not married. We started IVF. We started having, trying to have a baby before we were even engaged. And so we've kind of done everything a little bit backwards, <laughs> but mm. just knowing and like going through these hard conversations with Dylan it makes me feel like, well, regardless of marriage or not, like I know we're so connected and we're so bonded through this experience. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of changes perception. I and mean, that's definitely true. <clears throat> I mean, kind of what I was getting at is like, if you just get knocked up, it's just like, Oh, we got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And then, but if you choose to like actually go down this path as a long journey, you're, I mean, I think it's pretty clear. You're pretty damn committed to each other. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> no, true. It's yes. it, 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 there is no better evidence of your commitment to each other than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You can't be like, oh yeah, it just happened to us. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you okay. do, you have hard conversations. It's like, well, if this doesn't work out, are we both open to adoption or embryo adoption or not having kids at all? And it's good to have those conversations ahead of time rather than like finding out later on that you're misaligned on, you know, what plan B is. And then some, some relationships, like what if you can't work through that? Totally. So. It, it reminds me of, we had a marriage and family therapist on, this was a while ago now, but you know, there are certain things that you can sort of come to compromises on and maybe just not be on the same page about, but one of the ones that you want to get out of the way sooner than later and make sure you're on the same page about is whether or not you want to do this. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, there's no compromising. Yeah. No, not much. <laughs> yeah. Can't have half a kid. Yeah. So the sooner the better. Okay. I have one final question for you. And then we're going to get to the game. Okay. okay. Any we're beliefs? <laughs> Surprise. Oh, I didn't tell him. If, and... you thought, if you thought you were going to have a fight now, you're, you, you don't have <laughs> any idea what you're in for. Okay. Any beliefs about relationships that have changed now that you have this one? For me... Until I met Dylan, I always kind of thought I am like, I hate to say this, but I, I kind of thought it was like bachelor-esque, like it's picture perfect. You're going to find your like dream hunk guy. You are a hunk. But like, <laughs> I don't know. I just had this like weird distorted perception that it was going to be like, you meet this guy and you ride off into the sunset. And it has been that, but it also has been real and it's been gritty. And so I think I just always thought it was I don't know, going to be some fairy tale. That makes it sound like I don't think our relationship is a fairy tale. But I don't know how to describe it. But to be fair, really you have been fed that as as a female yeah. in our yeah. society. You've been fed that since And by the yeah. television. Yeah. And by the television. Yeah. So that's an yeah. honest answer. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I don't know. I mean, that's a really tough one. Um, I've never really been much of a relationship guy before Sarah. I'd only been in one 
long relationship. <clears throat> um, so coming into my second one, I think, you know, you, for me, it was always like, I'm a very outdoor oriented guy. I always thought I would find a, a woman that would just like want to get in a van and go see the world. And we do that to some degree, but like not live in the van permanently and be like rock climbing bums or whatever. And so for Sarah to come into my life, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I never really realized that you could have such a strong connection with somebody that you respected for their brain more than just say their looks. And like, mm -hmm. obviously Sarah's a beautiful woman. Um, all of America knows that, but like, uh, you know, the real reason is that we're together is simply because we connect on creativity and drive and, and then emotion came in and it's really just the physical attraction is probably last on the tier, mm -hmm. which is pretty, you know, cool. pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You That's answered a, a lot better than I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, no winners here. When, no winners. When yet. we first started dating, like we went on this hike and I don't know how the conversation came up, but you know, Dylan is an athlete through and through everything he does. He excels at, he's very capable. He's one of the most capable human beings I've ever met. And so he can rock climb, he can mountain, but like all of it. And then he met me who had physical limitations. And so we had this conversation about like, he had always thought he'd be with someone that was like, you'd go rock climbing together and you'd do all these things together. And then it kind of had to be an ego shift when you started dating me. In the physical world. Yes. In the physical world. Mm -hmm. And what like that meant for activities and like how it was going to change a little bit of your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Not going so extreme. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think it also has enriched our lives or my life at least. Um, because we are more successful in the grander scheme of things, mm -hmm. you know, well, not grander scheme. It's just kind of, it's perspective, right? Where do you want to be successful? You know, ultimately it doesn't matter, you know, what you want to like connect on as long as you connect emotionally and romantically, then like mm -hmm. all the other shit kind of just like falls to the wayside. Exactly. Yeah. I love that answer. I love it when a man answers honestly to that. <laughs> Dylan is full of a lot. There's a lot of honesty. There's there. a lot of honesty, but oh, it's yeah. true. I think a lot of men... And maybe it's tied into the sort of like subduing your emotions. I, I think that a lot of men are kind of surprised when they do fight an emotional connection that they that mm -hmm. suddenly, oh, wait, the fact that you're hot is actually way lower down on the list than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's pretty yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think agree. American men in general, probably actually many, maybe more in other countries, spend a lot of their lifetime energy on suppressing their emotions. Yeah. That's a big it job as a man and it's exhausting. And yeah. when you let yeah. go completely, if you really let go, it's just like half the work you have to do in life is gone. Yeah. Sounds That's nice. one of the things I'm attracted to most about Dylan is that he is way more sensitive than I, than people think he, he definitely has kind of like a rough exterior around a lot of his friends and the people he grew up with. And so I love being like, that, knowing that I get to see a softer side and a more gentle side. Oh, Sarah, mm. we're on the exact same page. <laughs> I totally get you on that. I think one of my favorite things about, a, you know, a really connected relationship is getting to see the underside. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's funny yeah. because when I when I met you, yeah, I know you appreciate like I, I'm my real self with you completely emotionally. Yeah. And like, I'm sort of like, it's, I'm so comfortable with Charlene. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take this out to the rest of the world. And like, all my friends are like, what's going on with you? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. That's a little too much emotion, dude, but it's Aww. good. It works better that way. Oh, that's yeah. Cute. All right. It is now time for the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Yay! <laughs> very good. You guys were very intense writing your yeah. answers. There was a, yeah. a mm -hmm. there. Sarah was making sure Dylan wasn't cheating. Yeah, yeah. It seemed uh, a lot of sweating. Yeah, going a lot on. of sweating going. <laughs> but we did <laughs> warn them that we gave them some hard yeah. questions. Challenging. We'll see how you guys did. Who should we start okay. with? Let's start with Dylan. Dylan, in honor of our meeting, Dylan today, mm -hmm. you get to go first. Dylan, All right. when you go to the bar, what is your drink of choice? Manhattan. Oh, nice. wow. 
I don't know why I didn't see that coming, oh, but I didn't. <laughs> you wrote my hand on the backside. That's why it's bleeding through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love a good permanent marker. Okay, Manhattan. Sarah, did you get that? I said old fashioned Manhattan. Excellent. Okay. Sarah gets Winner. that point. Winner. Yes. Yeah. Sarah, how about you? What do you order? Sauvignon Blanc. White wine. Oh, okay. Very nice. Okay, he gets the point. Very nice. Off to a good start here. Off to a great start. Okay, we're tied. Yes, Yes. tied. (laughs) One-one. Question number two, Dylan. What were you wearing when you two first met? Well, ski clothes, but I think it was a green jacket and brown pants. Okay. I said lime green ski jacket. Wow. She gets that point. Nice. Excellent. Okay. Sarah, how about you? What were you wearing? I was wearing... A pink and orange ski outfit. What? I got that way wrong. I said blue jacket, white pants. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow, uh, yeah, you did get that wrong. I don't I think you're right. Yes, huh? I have the photo of it. I have the photo of it. I oh. would put my money on Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry, Dylan. You did not get that point. Right? Two one. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Even if you're right about what she was wearing, you're still wrong about the game because you should have known that she would have guessed wrong about what she yeah, was wearing yeah. if you really knew her. That's fair. I should have just said pink because she loves pink. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. Okay, Dylan, what was your first ever job, meaning the first thing you ever got paid money to do? Uh, bus boy. Okay, very nice. Oh. Bus boy, at Italian underground. Oh, specific. Wow, wow. she got oh, that. Wrong place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she wrote too many things. The extra effort wasn't but needed. But she did. She, you still got it. No, you, you get, get it because she wrote bus boy. boy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a bus boy. She went okay. out of her way to be specific, and it backfired. Yeah, she but she's it doesn't trying matter. for extra credit. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> yeah. Okay, she Brown gets. Brown nosing the Sarah, you're three. Very good. Okay, Sarah, your first ever job. I worked at the ice skate rental at the lake house. Oh, I never read lake rentals, but I didn't know what she did. Oh, that's good enough. Oh, that's good. You got it. Okay. Very good. Excellent. (laughs) That's a cute first job. (laughs) This is a very strong out of the gate start yeah. for you two, by the way. And also, I, I, Sarah, I want to know more about this ice I do skate too. rental place. Yeah. That's I super know. Cute. It was so cute. Yeah, I just worked. I was the girl that cute. worked behind the where you would get you'd rent your ice skates and go skating on the lake. It was oh, not very glamorous, but it was a lot that of fun. That is extremely wholesome. <laughs> I know. I know. I did it for four years. Wow. <laughs> Every winter. So did you eventually get promoted to like head ice skate rental person? <laughs> No, and I didn't really want to. I just liked being in there and like cute boys worked in there and cute boys would come play hockey. So I was quite content. <laughs> That's a cute, cute gig. Like you must that. be a good yeah. skater. Oh, me? No, I didn't even like going on the lake. I just, like, <laughs> I just liked being in the rental. So you literally just got this job for boys. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So you don't Respect. understand where Respect. I grew up, the town I grew up, that was like the only pastime. It was like... What you did, middle school through high school, you go ice skating on the weekends, after school, all winter break. That's where everyone would be every day. And I was like, I don't like skating, so I'll work in the rental. Oh, that's super cute, that though. That's very, a cute. Cute, very wholesome. Yes. Yes. Question number four, Dylan. How do you take each of the following? Your potatoes, eggs, and coffee. Okay, potato, fried, eggs, over easy, coffee with cream. Okay. Whoa. Okay. I said... Roasted potatoes, what? like we had last night. <laughs> <laughs> Eggs over easy and coffee with oat milk. Oh, is Sarah, that, is that that's uh, one out of three? Ooh, uh, so I lose that round. I think you lose. Oh, yeah. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, I feel sorry, bad. I was close. That was really that's close. Okay. close. <laughs> but we require two out of three for the point. Let's see. Two if out Dylan, of three. Okay. Let's see if Dylan pulls ahead now. It's very close. Sarah, okay. how do you take your roasted potatoes? Okay. Eggs over easy. Coffee with a lot of cream. And sugar. All right. I said baked, aka roasted. Uh, huh? Over easy, and coffee with cream, aka coffee mate. Yeah. <laughs> Not sponsored. Dylan, oh, you're a winner. You, you got are a that winner point. On that one. You got that point. Oh. Ooh. Oh, Sarah, that that roasted potato did you win? Wow, this is a <laughs> this is a um a very, very exciting game. It's 3-3 down to the final question. Yep. Yep. Oh, damn. Okay. Okay. This is it. Tiebreaker. For all the marbles. All right, Dylan, what are the top 3 things on your bucket list? 
Number one, rafting the Grand Canyon. Okay. Uh, right. Number two, driving down the Baja. Okay. And number three, traveling to East China. Oh, wow. Yeah. Specific. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> East China. Okay. I said drive to Baja, Ooh. drive to Argentina, mm. and Grand Canyon. X oh, wow. Oh. I mean, that, whew, Pretty good. that was very impressive. Then, very impressive. For me, Patagonia, Everest Space Camp, and Nepal slash Annapurna Circuit. Oh that's my! Like, that's the same thing. I know. That's yeah, what that's I was kind of is the same thing. Okay. I had a hard time with that one. Okay, well, Everest Base Camp, and then that's all I got. Then I said Paris and Hawaii. Paris? I've literally never said it. <laughs> <laughs> you just I literally never said what like no any girl would want to go to. Pulled, like, had a I out. feel bad because I feel like he deserves that, but he did only get one out of three, and we took the point away from Sarah for the roasted potato. That's true. So, Sarah, this is 4-3. You are the winner it's of the Dear Shady Newlyweds game. 4-3, that's pretty good. Oh, Dylan, you looked upset. I was yeah, like, yeah, did I, I was, get I it thought right? we I, thought, I, up. I thought for sure I won. I the scorekeeper messed up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a protest. We have a protest. <laughs> no, very good. What, we, what I like is we took away points from each of you for similar yeah. reasons. You only got one out of three. But this was a very strong. This Newly was West the game strongest, most competitive game we've seen. Okay. It's, it's, wow. Really <laughs> dramatic. I don't know no, no, I'm not saying it's I'm not just saying it's the best game we've ever had. I'm saying this is the closest, most high scoring game. It was had. a very high scoring game. And even when you didn't get a point you kind of deserve to yeah. get something of a point. <laughs> well, thank you. We'll take it. Yeah, yeah you guys were wonderful. I'm just so, glad you didn't ask me what her middle name was. <laughs> <laughs> no, you so, do know. I do know. I'm curious. Sarah, what is your middle name? Beth. Oh, that's it's a not, nice middle name. Oh. Yeah, he always thought it was Rose, but it's Beth. Sarah Beth. That's a lovely middle name. That is name. nice. Yeah. Sarah Beth thank is you. a very, very good brunch place near us. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, true. so is it the same? Yeah, I know. And they also make um, like jarred preserves and stuff. Yes, I'm yes, sure yes. The same yes. Place. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very brunch friendly. Mm -hmm. Yep. You guys, thank you so so much for joining us. This yeah, was absolutely this was lovely. Loved you. Thank answers. you. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much. Your honesty, I just loved it. We Good love stuff. honesty. Yes. Yeah. Not not Thanks beating the around the bush. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much and hope to maybe ski with you one day. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, for sure. Please do. Yeah. Maybe we'll go to that Sarah Beth brunch place. Yeah. New yeah. York. <laughs> yeah. But we will not be going on the double black diamonds. No, no. We will be doing the, the, the squares and the diamonds. <laughs> and, Circles, and you, green you will circle. have to downgrade. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. Good. Have a great one. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Wow. They were lovely. Yeah. Oh, their answers. Yeah, good. Really not not stock. avoidant. Yeah, not avoidant, not stock, not predictable. Yeah. They were brutally honest answers. That is, they led us under the hood of what a functioning relationship is. This is like. what a love fest is, is all aiming about. to do. Yes, yes. Get under the hood in a way that's not threatening. <laughs> that's our brand. <laughs> You will, you will leave this unscathed, but with truth, having been spilled from you. I, there was no fluff in this one. No. Wow. Straight shooters. Straight shooters. Loved it. And, and again, that's, I think, the sign of a very strong relationship is when you are comfortable, especially in front of thousands of people, <laughs> comfortable talking about things that are not easy. No. Things that you had to work through and things that you continue to work through and... It's just the honesty is just all we want. Mm -hmm. That's all we want. That's all we want. There's not enough of it. And I I want everyone to follow both of them because they're, I mean, their Instagrams are very different, but both so beautiful in different mm -hmm. ways. And we'll link their handles below. Hers is just the most inspiring. It'll make you love yourself more, mm -hmm. love your body more, love what you are capable of more. And... And you see some beautiful pictures. Yeah. And you get, the, uh, that's the other thing is like you get to see how they work together through through the pro through their content yes. <laughs> our favorite word content mm -hmm. yeah they're just a great team yeah yeah I, I really and i think to give dylan the credit he deserves as a man he was more forthcoming than you would find most of the time well that's the thing is sometimes the partner of the bachelor person mm -hmm. <laughs> we have on because usually it is a bachelor person not always though yeah uh i think that 
it's kind of a daunting thing to be brought on and like Absolutely. interviewed about your relationship. You know, it's one thing to post photos, but it's another thing to be like to to be asked. Yeah. Exactly what your thought process was and why you, and how you compliment each other. And he was great. Yeah, on a unabashedly forthcoming in yeah. in a way that, you know, he, it, there was there was no, he was not trying to put on a show in any way. No. He was just like, I'm going to give you the exact answer <laughs> to this question. Yeah. And that was great. And it's refreshing. I loved their answer to working together. Oh, yeah. I think that there is this idea that when you work together and, and the, you know, and it shows what a happy couple you are. And I guess this is just Instagram in general, yes. the world in general. Yeah. And our podcast, you know, mm-hmm. it is, there are... There are difficulties. It's hard to see through to that when all you get is these this rosy, mm-hmm. the rosiest of pictures, literally. Yeah. yeah. And it's nice when people are honest about it because working together, no matter whether you're in a relationship or just a friend or just someone you don't care about at all, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. It's always hard. It's hard. It's so true. Yeah. Someone you don't care about Yeah, at just all. some random person you don't ever want to get a beer with. <laughs> someone like, you actively despise. Yeah, <laughs> someone you hate, someone you don't care about. It, it's really some a challenge. And I think it's something to be proud of. I'm proud of the fact that we work together successfully. And I think it's a testament to a good partnership of any kind, <laughs> friendship or romance. <laughs> very good. Particularly very good. romance, though. Let's be honest. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Great newlyweds game showing. I felt a little bad taking away points from them. I know. You could tell Dylan was a little sore. He's like, wait a minute. No, I didn't come here to lose. <laughs> yeah. But we, we did take away her point for the potatoes. Yeah. I think it was a fair game. It was. I think it was a very close victory for Sarah. And it was earned. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Very good. 4-3. I don't know if they realize how, how high those scores are. That's the thing. I was trying to stress it. I think they were like, whatever. You know, he was like, I lost. And she didn't really seem to be impressed. But <laughs> I, I I, meant what I said. I think this is the highest scoring, most competitive game we've had. I, I know it's we're talking about it, the difference between one and two points total in history. <laughs> but 4-3, I don't believe we have had. Yeah, this was basically four and a half to three and a half, except we didn't give them those half yeah, points. It was it, this was as cl- almost as close as you can get to the highest scoring closest game you can have <laughs> on an early let's go. I'm trying to get there. Uh, I love this game. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a good good game. It's stuff. always fun. It is always fun. Yeah. And they delivered. All right, Andy. I think then that's a wrap for this love fest. I think so. This love fest that has been a long time coming long in the oven for many years yeah and she said this is the first time they've ever done something like this together that's great as a couple yeah so we got that exclusive (laughs) done it was very generous of them to do that okay well if you enjoyed what you heard today you know what we're going to ask of you and that is to like subscribe hit the notification bell follow us on instagram leave us apple podcast ratings and reviews And generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast that you enjoy and consume. And on that note, I think that's a wrap for this love fest. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye.